right. Hey, guys. Um, this is Grant Sashray. Um, here joined with my co-host, uh, Jason Lejourn. This is the Protect the Boot podcast. We are joined by a special guest right out of North Louisiana and Clay Parker of K104. Clay, welcome to the show, man. Man, great to have you. Uh, great to be here, I should say. Uh, welcome. Mm-hmm. So today we're going to talk a lot about North Louisiana. Uh, since we're mainly a South Louisiana type of media company, where we, co- we cover a lot of high school football in South Louisiana, but, you know, we really haven't got a chance to experience some North Louisiana teams, so that's why we brought on Clay uh, to talk some North Louisiana football as, you know, Rustin and what – um we talk about Rustin and Neville and also the West Monroe upset. That was huge. That shocked a lot of people across the state. So, Clay, let's get this started with that. Um, what happened right outside of uh, West Monroe in terms well, of the, the uh, North Shore game? Yeah, I think a lot of people were concerned. I know Coach Davis spoke about this uh, with Aaron and Jake uh, leading up to the game on Friday. He was concerned about a letdown. Obviously, you know, Rustin and West Monroe are big rivals. And West Monroe played a heck of a game that Friday night. I mean, they could have won. They were ahead late in the ball game. had a chance to win before Jordan Hayes took it about 80 yards to the house. And uh, I think he was concerned about a letdown. And I think his quote was, don't make me tell you I told you so after the game. And, of course, Sally, that's what happened. West Monroe, you know, some penalties went against them. They made a lot of blunders, too. I mean, let's not, let's not overlook the fact that uh, roughing the punter calls – uh, you know, just penalties. And then, of course, they still had a chance to win 31-yard field goal and it got blocked with uh, in just a few seconds left. So, West Monroe had their chances. Their offense came out flat. When you score seven points in the first round of the playoffs, you don't beat too many ball teams. That's the that's the way it is. Yeah, and, uh, and Clay, uh, just – we talked about really North Shore as well, right, because they proven a couple years ago uh, when they went up to West Monroe, they played the double overtime. It took West Monroe two overtimes to beat North Shore a couple years ago. So was it just this game? Was it more on West Monroe losing the game, per se, or was it more North Shore just going there and being them? Or was it a little bit of a mixture of both? Yeah, it's a mixture of both. And I saw the North Shore coach after the game. He was kind of just stunned that they, te- they pulled off. But, yeah, give credit to them. I mean, they played well, like you said, two years ago. It was 37-30. West Monroe barely squeaked past North Shore then. But – West Monroe's offensive line has been a problem all year. They're they're young. They've had a lot of injuries. And I think North Shore just beat them at the line of scrimmage. And it really prevented West Monroe from running the ball. They've really struggled running the ball all year. And they uh, and obviously Hayden Federico is a tremendous quarterback, tremendous athlete. He's done a good job scrambling. He's got a couple of big receivers. He was able to hit some, but but not enough. There were no big plays for West Monroe. And like I said, you score seven points. I think a lot of blame goes on West Monroe. They just they, they were injuries, they were young. And they just didn't get it done. And, you know, I know, like, what's more off, you know, they lost this game. But what do you have to say about their resilience throughout the year, especially with the whole Todd Garvin situation? Yeah, I mean, kudos to those players. Kevin Kevin Davis came in, did a great job kind of rallying the troops there. It was just a tough deal, you know, uh, with, with Todd Garvin and how everything was handled and all the distractions there. And then losing to Zachary so bad early in the season. But West Virginia, from that point on, man, we were worried about – you know, they had a tough game against Washita. That was our game of the week that week. They were able to pull it out. They went to Ash and had a great second half beat Ash. And all of a sudden, we're like, man, West Monroe's making the run here. And they just couldn't – against Rustin, they had their chances. But even after the loss, everybody felt good. Everybody's like, okay, there's a, you hate to take moral victories, but you feel like, okay, we played a top three team in the, in the state, a top five team in the state, uh, everything they wanted. So we, we, everybody felt like everybody was looking ahead to that quarterfinal matchup in Rustin. And unfortunately, West Virginia didn't even advance to the second round. So it was our first time they haven't reached the second round since 1994. So wow. long time. Yeah. I mean, we're just used to West Monroe making deep runs in the playoffs. And we're talking about all those great teams Coach John Shiles has had. And, and really, some of the great teams, even even though Jerry Arlich hasn't won a state championship, they've made deep runs uh, in, in the playoffs. So, what's just been kind of the feeling along the the Rebel Nation right now? And just because it's been kind of a tough year, like like Grant alluded to with with the Todd Garvin situation. So, what's been kind of like been the mood of the fan base just being around them? Yeah, I think most people are encouraged. Uh, everybody has a lot of respect for Kevin Davis. I mean, he's a good guy. And I think uh, he's somebody that you want coaching your kids. You know, he doesn't have a, a lot of history, uh, successful history as a head coach, although he did have some good years in Texas. He won a couple of state championships as an offensive coordinator when he coached over there back in the uh, back at, uh, in the early 2000s. And, and uh, I think, again, in about 15 or 16. So he's had some success there uh, as an offensive coordinator. 
but I think people are encouraged. I mean, obviously they're pretty stunned and upset right now, but there's a really good sophomore class that's going to be juniors next year. There's a really good freshman class that's going to be sophomores next year. Uh, they're, they're going to have some, you know, issues. Of who's going to replace Hayden Federico at quarterback? I mean, he's been a three-year starter. I mean, great kid, great athlete. And then they, they're losing two really good receivers, David Moore and Grant Edmondson. Who's going to step up and replace those guys? So there's a little concern. But I think overall people think that Davis was a good hire and that they think that, uh, you know, there's, there's some young players, a lot of good young players on the horizon. And moving on to another uh, team uh, in the Monroe area, which is Neville. Uh, they have a really tough matchup with Central uh, coming up this uh, this Friday. And me and Jason were kind of talking about it. You know, Central, even though they are an 18th seed, they play more like a ninth or a tenth seed than they do an eighth seed. And you know, obviously they had the, they had the early loss in a pretty bad De La Salle team. But they took Zachary and Catholic to the break. I mean, they, I mean, really, a lot of people thought they should have beat Zachary. So h- how do you view that matchup? And do you think Central could upset Neville? I definitely think Central could upset Neville. Uh, if you remember last year, Neville was in the same situation they are now. They had week 10 by – then they then they had an open around by so they went. I think they're going 19 days without playing football, and uh, they they were really flat last year because East Ascension they ended up winning the game, but they were really flat, and of course they lost in the quarterfinal round. So I think a lot of people are concerned about that. Uh, you know, that was a very talented team. Their offense isn't great. I mean, they've got the, the passing game. They've got two guys that rotated quarterback, and they're both pretty good quarterbacks, but they haven't really established a great passing attack. Their running game is good. They got Jay Sean White and Jalen Nichols back there. They're both really good backs. And their defense is extraordinary. Mike Collins has done a great job. It's going to be a low-scoring game, I expect. But uh, I think people are starting to get – people are starting getting the word out. Hey, Neville fans, you better get there on time because uh, this game could be very tight. And, in fact, if if Neville doesn't play their best, I think they're capable of losing. Um, So what do you think – Oh, you're good, Grant. Um, what is Coach Tannehill really thinking about? Because like, we had a conversation, I had a conversation with Coach Tannehill last year about having to buy, and I know there's like some benefits, obviously, of having to buy and having that time off to rest, but at the same time, not getting in that that rhythm. Um, so what, I'm wondering what if you talked to Coach Tannehill recently, and you have got any thoughts about what he thinks about having to buy in the first round. So it's funny you mentioned that. Aaron Dietrich just posted something this morning. Uh, Aaron went visited with him in his, in his office, and he's talking about that. He's obviously concerned. I mean, I don't want to say Neville can lose as much as Central can win. I guess I don't want to, you know, mm-hmm. take anything away from Central because I think they're a very good ball team. I know they've got, uh, you know, some really good – that Aiden Wilkinson kid is supposed to be a yeah. uh, fantastic tight end, and they got Damon Blocker, the running back. But, uh, you know, Neville's played some good offenses before. Uh, they played Washington when Zach Jackson was still healthy. Obviously, they played Rustin and really slowed both of those teams down a lot. So, I don't think the Neville defense is going to give up many points. It's just can their offense generate. They probably need two or three touchdowns, I think, to win. Yeah. What do you think what, – what's, what's the issue with uh, Neville? Because obviously Central – I mean, yeah, they have, they have a really good offensive line and – an even better defensive line as well, K. Mays and Braylon George. So where do you see the weak point in Neville's offense where that could be a problem uh, heading into the central game? Yeah, like I said, I think to start passing that, they have got some good receivers uh, out there. They just haven't been consistent getting the ball, giving, maybe giving the quarterback the time to throw. And uh, they, you'll see they rotate two kids, Sampanera and Fuller, a quarterback situation. And, you know, Tannehill will go with whoever's the hot hand. But uh, Fuller's been getting a little bit more reps this season, but both of them are very capable uh, players. Uh, they just it's they, they haven't got a whole lot of big plays out of them. Jalen Nichols, I think he's 100 percent now. That'll help a lot because he's a fantastic running back. So um, and their like I said, their defense is going to play. So I think it's going to be limiting uh, special teams errors and maybe their offense generating three or four or five big plays throughout the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of moving uh, going to the Shreveport area, um, a lot of the stigma around Louisiana is that some of the bigger public schools in Shreveport can never get it done. This year you have Captain Shreve, who's the number two uh, team in Division I select, and then Airline, uh, who has really, you know, who's really become probably one of the better teams in the state, considering the fact two years ago they were winning nine. Do you think any of those teams could uh, really uh, make that stigma go away about some of the bigger public schools in Shreveport? Um. 
I think both of them are good programs. Both of them played Union this year. So we have, I have a little bit of uh, knowledge on those programs. Obviously, Union probably should have beat Airline. It went down to the last play of the game, mm-hmm. and Airline scored on kind of a fluke play or a uh, gadget play, and they won. Uh, Captain Shreve beat uh, Union by a couple of touchdowns. I think they're probably a little bit better than Airline. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think Captain mm-hmm. Shreve is in that uh, select class with some of those big powerhouses, and that's going to be, you know, Ash is in that same boat, and I think Ash is probably a very good team as well. Um, it's going to be tough. I mean, that, that class is, as we know, is loaded with. I mean, you look down the list of schools in there. It's there's eight or ten teams I think that could possibly win it all. So it's going to be tough for yeah. Captain Shreve and and Ash. But I think Captain Shreve is definitely a very good ball team. Mm-hmm. And from what I've talked to a couple of people, and a lot uh, they a lot of people, you know they've talked to some coaches and whatnot, and a lot of people think that Rumble could beat Captain Shreve. So where do you think where do you think uh, Rumble could you know, beat Captain Shreve because, you know, Captain Shreve, they have a fantastic running back in Jermall and Otis. Their all offensive lines led by Devin Harper, who's one of the better offensive linemen in the country. So where do you see the weak points in their team where they get fall upset to um, Rumble? Yeah, I haven't seen enough of Captain Shreve to really know. Like I said, they, they played Union, but I didn't watch any of that ball game. You know, we don't really cover the Shreveport area real close, but I will. I am familiar a little bit with Rumble. You know, Washita beat Rumble early in the season when they were – uh, fully healthy, and the, but Rumble's mm-hmm. all over the place. I mean, they if they play their best, I think they can beat just about anybody. But mm-hmm. if they don't play well, they could lose by you know two or three touchdowns. So we'll see. I think it, a lot of this depends on how which Rumble team shows up Friday night. Uh, Clay, so going back to the Monroe area, right? I mean, because I know that's that's what y'all really uh, cover a lot of. And last week, I actually covered Westgate and Terrebonne and covered that game in the first round. And I know Westgate's going to have to go on the road to play Rustin. And uh, Rustin's the number one seed in the Division One non-select bracket. Uh, now, Westgate, from what I was able to see, it was a monsoon. I'm not sure how much rain y'all got in y'all area last week. Uh, but – it was a monsoon, and Westgate just really ran the football. They didn't throw one pass attempt, and they relied on multiple guys at quarterback, usually in the Wildcat, uh, to move the football. So, uh, And they relied on their defense, uh, defensive line. So, Rustin, they have themselves a great year this year. They're the favorites to win the state championship. What do you think about the Rustin Bearcats chances? I know they won a championship. I mean, they went to the championship game last year and lost to Destrahan in a very close game. What do you think about Coach Ball's squad and how motivated they are not to get back, but maybe make a run at a state championship? And when yeah, I, def- I, I definitely think they're going to make a run. They're a fantastic team. Uh, in some ways, almost losing to West Monroe might be a good thing for them. They had a bye week last week. Uh, I'm sure Kyle Williams and Coach Ball and that defensive staff got a chance to kind of tinker with a few things. I mean, their their defense is so good. You saw them. You know, we, I know Lafayette Christian's a common opponent, the only mm-hmm. common opponent between Westgate and. Uh, I think uh, Lafayette Christian beat Westgate by three or four touchdowns and uh, maybe four touchdowns. And, of course, Rustin beat them at home. Their defense, I think, had five interceptions of Joan Johnson. So their defense is very good all the way around. I mean, they got all three levels. You know, they've got, uh, you know, uh, Guidry. They've got Mayfield. They've got and their, their defensive backfield is so talented. I mean, I was surprised that West Road did as well offensively against them. But uh, I think Rustin's going to be a, be tough to be. I don't see – Westgate beating Rustin Friday night. That'd be a huge upset if it happens. And uh, their offense, how much, how many strides do you think the passing game has done with a new quarterback and Brantley this year? I know they got a freshman there. That LSU's already offered already at the wide receiver position. So I know we got Jordan Hayes to run the football with, and he's been there for a while. But uh, what what strides have you seen from the offensive side of football? Because I know there's a lot of – everybody knows on that on the defensive side of football how good they really are. Yeah, Brantley's still a work in progress. I think mm-hmm. he's got all the tools to be great. And he hasn't really – haven't taken a, few, a bunch of steps forward yet. The Hudson kid, obviously, the freshman, makes some catches. Uh, but Brandley's improved on – it's really been a factor is running the ball. He's been running the ball extremely well. So you've got him and Hayes, both of them. Uh, that's a great one-two punch. And then Weston's got a couple other guys out of the backfield that can run the ball as well. But you're right, though. He'll need to make some throws. I mean, in this day and age, it's hard to win a state championship when you run 90%. You've got to be able to throw some. And I think Brantley can – Hopefully he'll continue to develop as the playoffs goes on because they're going to need him to win a state or to at least even get to a state championship this year. Right, you know, and the and their side of the bracket, you know, they got some. <clears throat> you know, they could potentially have a a really tough matchup with an, a team like Airline, 
who has a high powered offense. Now their defense kind of lets up a lot of points, but that's mainly because they have the number one passing offense in the state. Do you think that's a game where you could see Russ and lose you just because of some of those weaknesses in the passing game? Yeah, I don't, I don't see, I, I, I don't, I haven't seen Santa Mall play. They beat obviously Washington pretty good last week. That's mm-hmm. the only team I, I don't see Ireland beating Russ. I just don't do it. I, I think the best teams are in the bottom half of that bracket with, with Destro, Hand, Zachary, yeah. uh, of course, uh, Neville, Central, maybe. So I, mm-hmm. I think the, you know, I really think Rustin's in a good spot on, on the bracket. I mean, like I said, Santa Mall may be a challenge. I don't think Westgate's going to be one. I really don't think Walker or North Shore will be a challenge for Rustin as long as they're playing the right. rest. And, and I don't even think Airline's going to be a challenge. No offense. I just don't think right. that passing mm-hmm. game is going to do a whole lot against Rustin's defense. Right. right. And you know, I've seen, I watched Santa Mall play. They're, I mean, they're, they're kind of like Russell in terms of like they are a very good defensive team, but their offense is – I mean, they're, it's okay, but it's not the greatest in the world. Like they're kind of built like Russell's but with less talent. I mean, they're kind of one of those gritty teams in Baton Rouge area, but they but they have only lost one game all year, but they're not going to be Rustin. Um, Jesse, you have anything else to say uh, – anything else to say about Rustin before we, before we move on? I, I don't. If they, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, I was just going to say uh, that – that defense last year, I mean, defense wins you championships and this time of year when it's when it's cold, it's wet. We've already I've already witnessed that in the first round when the weather changes. Uh you can win a lot of games in the playoffs like that. And Russin definitely has a formula, but I feel like it's gonna be semifinals, state championship, like Clay mentioned, that we're gonna need to rely on that passing game. So and I think it what as if the strides that he makes, especially late in the season, late in the playoff. I, I mean, it's going to determine if if Russell can get over that hump and get a, get a state championship. Yeah, I was going to say, if airline, I mean, they do have a good pass attack. If they get out early and get ahead two or three scores, and and it might force Rustin to have to throw a little bit, that could be a little bit of concern. Uh, I think Rustin's too good there. And of course, if they do end up meeting Santa Mar in the semis, you know, we'll have to call Benji Lewis and get his opinion because he's played both squads here recently, mm-hmm. so he would know as well as anybody, especially being a defensive mind that he is. He would probably do this a good uh, preview should that happen in the semifinals down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, go ahead, Grant. Yeah, so, yeah, we're going to move on to uh, another team in kind of the Monroe area, you know. In Division II, uh, non-select, a lot of the talk has been North DeSoto. Uh, North DeSoto has been fantastic all year long. They're led by legendary uh, head coach Dennis Dunn, and they also have a very uh, a fantastic quarterback in Luke Delphi, who's only a sophomore, but Wasman on the in the, the top bottom half of the bracket has made some noise too with their defense. And even though they have some tough matchups, you know, they probably they most likely will play Assumption next week. And then they also have a tough matchup with uh they may also face uh Cecilia, who's also a fantastic team as well, led by Diesel Solari. So could you see Wasman making a run to the dome? I think I can. They have uh Really good defense. Terrence K, you can't say enough about the job he's done at Wasman. I mean, Wasman's had talent over the years. He has really done a good job of uh, – this is only his second year there uh, coming up and uh, putting his identity on the program. He's got a good group of assistant coaches. He didn't bring one assistant coach with him. He took over the staff that was there, kind of molded them after his style of coaching. They've got a very good squad. They're a little concerned that lost to uh, Sterlington a couple of weeks ago on a Thursday night. They gave up 38 points. That was by far the most points. I mean, they had given up 21, I think, to Calvary, and that was the most points. So, Sterlington put 38 points, which probably shows more about Sterlington than it does anything else. But, uh, you know, and, and Washington got a tough deal. Have, you know, it's the same thing that Mangum's got. They're the sixth seed. They've got to go on the road to play, and then they've got to turn around. Should they win and play another road game? You know, the, the margin between, you know, three and four and five and six is huge because of the bye and then the second round. Uh, it's almost not really fair in some ways you could say that because you've got to buy the first week and then you've got to turn and play a road game. And then more than likely you're going to have another road game after that. So, uh, but I think Wasman's very good there. They've got a good balance of time. They've got uh, uh, Eric Griffin running the ball and Antron A.J. Mason also runs the ball. Tristan Wooten's a good quarterback. He's not a great passer, but he's good enough. He's a good leader. He can run a little bit. And their defense is outstanding. So uh, I can see Wasman making a move. I, I, I haven't, I don't, I haven't done any film work on Assumption or Cecilia, like you said. I don't mm-hmm. know how good those programs are, but Wasman, they'll be in the game. I mean, nobody's going to blow them out, that's for sure. 
Uh, what has made him so good on defense? Because you mentioned Calvary, and it seemed like Calvary's been scoring 50, 60 points on pretty much everybody else this year. And, I mean, to be honest with you, that's one of the most impressive losses I've seen this year. They only give up 21 gets that high potent uh, attack at Calvary Baptist. And and uh, what they did in a year turnaround, I know they lost bad last year to Union Parish, and they just turned around this year. I mean, not having Trey Holly and all that, you can say that, but still Union Parish is a really good football team, and they're able to beat uh, Union Parish 12-7 to this year. So what is it about that defense that makes them stick out so much? Yeah, they just got a lot of athletes on the team. They got the big guy up front. Uh, I can't think of his name at the moment. He's a big dude's lineman. He's getting uh, scouted a little bit. They got some great defensive backs back there. They've they they've got several interceptions this season on them. And I think, like I said, I think K- Coach Cahey, Greg Boxley, and some of those guys have done a really good job coaching those guys up on, on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, he's got, like I said, they, Boston's had athletes before. They've got some really good athletes now, and they're coached very well, very disciplined. They, uh, they're just, I mean, it's a good combination of talent and, and coaching. And I. Uh, like I said, it's only a second year there. I, I don't know if they're going to make it to the Dome. That'd be a little bit of a surprise, but they've got the talent to definitely make a run for sure. Mm-hmm. Jason, got anything else before we move on? Oh, that's pretty much it. I mean, looking in the bracket, and that's the thing about the non-select Division Two bracket. I mean, I know North is a, a favorite, but – I mean, this is a, a even a division last year. I mean, Lutcher won the state championship in, in that bracket, and they were like only a four or five seed. So it's there really a bracket. Could, yeah, six seed. Yeah, six seed. So it's really anybody's bracket, um, really. And you look at that, there's no clear favorite uh, coming out of that bracket. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be interesting to follow. Yeah. Uh, another bracket that's pretty interesting to follow is uh, Division Three non select. There's a lot of great teams. Well, let's first get start off with uh, Sterling uh, Oak Grove. Uh, Oak Grove, you know, from looking at the bracket, they have a pretty tough road. I mean, and the, they could potentially face Mangum in the quarterfinals, and in the semis, they could either face Homer or Kenwood. So, could you see Oak Grove uh, repeating as the state champion of uh, Division Three not select? Yeah, that's my pick to repeat Oak Grove. Uh, I will say I don't think they have any problems with Lake Arthur at all this week. I will say Mangum is playing really good ball right now. They got some losses early on playing some, you know, they played Gina, they played Caldwell. They had some tough losses. I think they have like four losses. They were one and four, I think, at some point. But, man, they're playing really good. They've got some big guys up front. Everybody's healthy. They had a lot of injuries early on. Everybody's healthy. Austin Lively has done – has improved a lot under Bo Meeks, offensive coordinator. And – uh They've got some some running backs, some skill players that can make things happen. Obviously, they don't have Jalen Williams from last year. He was the all-world tailback. But this team yeah. is very good. If somebody's going to knock off Oak Grove, it could be Mangum next week. Of course, it'd have to be on the road. But uh, the Dragons are, are definitely a legitimate contender, in my opinion. Uh, Homer's had a lot of injuries lately. Uh, you know, they lost the, the Hampton kid to, for the season to that car accident. Uh, Greg Williams is back healthy. He's definitely a big part of their offense. They've been sluggish lately. Obviously, Hainsworth shut him out. And then they were only beating Delhi 12 to 2 at the half. They ended up, you know, winning uh, 28 to 8. But uh, I have a little concern about Homer right now, to be honest. Uh, they, they're going to have, I think they're going to have a tough matchup at Oakdale. And then should they win that, Kentwood's going to be, <laughs> Kentwood's going to be Kentwood. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know how good Kentwood is this year, but I know traditionally Kentwood's a very fast, very athletic. They're going to be a challenge for whoever they play the rest of the year, including Oak Grove, possibly. Yeah. 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 Kentwood's really, on, and Kentwood's only lost two games. Their their first loss was against Walker, who's in 5A, and their second loss was against Southern Lab, who I think yeah. will win in Division Four, the Division Four Select State Championship. Uh, but actually, I I'm, I said division four, not division, uh, division three, not select. Yeah, it's division yeah. four, not select. It's just like you know, you get confused about this division, man. <laughs> not select and not select. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, but yeah, but you know, but who, who do you see winning on the bottom side of the bracket with Oak Grove, Mangum, Homer, Kentwood? Like I said, I'm picking Oak Grove. I've seen him do it so many times the last mm-hmm. few years. It's hard to go against them. But, man, Mangum and Kentwood, but you can't overlook either one of those programs. I mean, Homer's done great these last few years. Richie Casey's done a phenomenal job at Homer. There's no doubt about it. He's made that program a contender. I don't think they're quite as good this year as they've been in previous years. He could, he could surprise me. But uh, I think, you know, Kentwood and Mangum will be challenges. But if I have to pick somebody, it's going to be Oak Grove. And uh, we'll get the top side of the bracket. Uh, sorry, 
Brandon Ruff Grant there. Uh, but Haynesville, I know we talked about Haynesville and Homer, and, uh, and Haynesville was able to beat Homer the last uh, regular season game of the year. And, uh, you know, Haynesville is definitely a powerhouse. We talk about the state of Louisiana. What have you seen from uh, Haynesville this year? And where do you think they, they match up with a – you know, maybe a Logan Sport, who is the number one seed in that top side of the bracket. Yeah, I think that's going to be the semifinal matchup. Uh, the only game we saw for Haynesville uh, was their uh, loss to Oak Grove. I mean, Oak Grove looked – and it was close. Late in the first half, it was close. And at one point, Haynesville was ahead. And Oak Grove came out in the second half and just went wild. But uh, I tell you, Haynesville's got a kid named Alonzo Jackson. He's an unbelievable player. You know, they, they kind of – rotate players around a lot in, in, in uh, Oak Grove, excuse me, in Haynesville. In fact, there'll be games where he only gets four or five carries or three carries because they'll play somebody not too good. But, man, he he showed out against Oak Grove. He's uh, He can catch the ball. He plays middle linebacker on defense. He is a, a sensational player, and uh, I expect him to carry the tours all the way to the semis. I don't know. You know, I haven't seen Logan Sport play. that They have that tradition, kind of like Kentwood. I mean, mm-hmm. I got. I think that's going to be a, an all-time classic semifinal battle. Of course, it'll be in Logan Sport should that happen. But uh, I expect those teams. You know, Hanson got General Trask this week. Uh, General Trask beat Arcadia last week. Uh, Cameron Williams, linebacker, great player. They got a quarterback named Amani Williams. It's really good too. They got some talent on that team. I just don't think they have the size to match up with Hanson. Um, mm. So I expect more than likely Hanson will win that game in advance. And like I said, they'll probably beat John Arett. Face John Arett. I suspect they'll win that game, and then. You know, we'll see. Logan Sport, Hainesville, if that's a semifinal matchup, man, grab your popcorn. That's going to be a great one. <laughs> Just like the bottom half. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's yeah. Oak, Grove, Oak Grove or Mangum against uh, more than likely yeah. Kentwood, that would be a phenomenal matchup. So, I, I love the Division Four non-select class. It's like the small rural towns in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. all shut down the city. Lock great teams. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to move on to Division Three non-select. Um, the, the one that, you know – the one I got confused with, but there's a lot of good teams <laughs> in that one too. Um, you know, sp- speaking of Division Three, obviously you have Union Parish. Union Parish is, you know, they have a pretty tough road. They have to go to, uh, you know, potentially have a matchup with Bubalusa, and then if they win that one, they have to. Fa- they probably will face maybe the number one seed Gina or even Amy. You know, mm-hmm. a- Amy's an AC, so you can very well see Amy because they have a lot. They usually have a lot of talent, so. What do you see out of Union Parish? Do you think they can make it three straight trips to the Dome, uh, despite you know their issues throughout the season and also the tough road ahead of them in the playoffs? You know they could. Uh, Coach Spat does a good job of scheduling. Like, and he even came on the radio against Sterling. He says, "I don't care that we lost those games to our, uh, to um, airline and Captain Chief. I don't care because I'm just trying to get our t- or get our players playing some good competition early on and challenging them." And they. Like I said, they could have beat, probably should have beat Airline. They obviously lost to Captain Tree. They've lost down the stretch to Sterlington, and then Waspin beat them. So, but they're battle tested. I mean, I, I don't think they'll make it to the dome. But golly, it's, it's so hard to say. I mean, they have the talent to do it. Uh, they'll, I think they'll easily beat Port Allen this week, and then probably face Bogalusa. I don't know enough about them, but, and then of course the other side of the bracket, Gina's having a once in. I think this is the third mm-hmm. time they've gone undefeated into the playoffs. Uh, they beat Carwell, and we went to the game. It was week, I think it was week nine. They beat Carwell sixty to seven. Uh, it will be a little bit closer this time, but Gina's it's, they're really good. Their line play, Zarek Jones. They can throw the ball a little bit with Zach Barker. They're a good ball club. I meet. I saw them play Sterlington on a uh, Thursday night, and down in the meet, uh, of course, I watched on the stream. Their quarterback is is really good, and they've got some mm-hmm. receivers that can get the ball. I mean, they they had Sterlington worried for a while. I, the meet Gina matchup is going to be a clash of different styles. It's going to be a very interesting matchup there. Uh, I think the winner of that ball game definitely has a chance to go to the dome. Obviously, with, with Union having a chance to. Yeah, and speaking about Sterlington, right? Uh, they've had a great season this year. They beat Amy late in the regular season. They're coming off, uh, you know, the one state championships a couple state championships just a couple years ago, two years ago. So, um, what can you really say about about the Panthers this year and have a chance to go to another? Their state championship and uh, Coach Lee's uh, mantle. Yeah, they had a, of course last year was kind of an anomaly for their program. They had some chemistry issues and what have you. Had a, a really average year for them, but they're back full force. They've got a running back by committee. They got about five guys that carry the ball. Probably Tremel Carlin is the tailback. Probably is probably the most explosive player they have. But they've got Evans and Copeland and of course Dylan Downs, quarterback. He runs the ball well. 
they don't throw the ball great. I mean, they, they do throw it some. That could be in the – kind of like Rustin, that could be an Achilles heel for him. But uh, they're a very talented squad. Their defense is good. Jackson King, linebacker, he's he's a stud. I don't see anybody in the bottom. You know, St. James and Manny, that's going to be a great matchup there. You know, Sterlington are more than likely face the winner in the semifinals. Uh, it's hard to pick against Sterlington. If I had to pick somebody to win Division Three, months, like it's going to be Sterlington. I mean, they're just – I've seen them play enough. They, they get better and better as the season goes on. They're well coached. Great coaches all over the field. Uh, they're going to be tough to beat. Mm-hmm. And uh, going to the last, um, you know, probably the last, uh, the last talk of the show, Washington Christian, you know, they're a very interesting team this year. They've played a lot of tough opponents, and they've won a lot of those big games. But now they're going to the playoffs. I mean, they have a pretty tough road as well. They could pl- easily play St. Mary's out of Natchitoches. And then also may have a, a matchup with Southern Lab in the semifinals. And then in the top half of that bracket, that's what, they have some tough teams as well. So, do you see Washington Christian repeating as state champions? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I think they're that talented. In fact, this may be their most talented team they've ever had. They had a their mm-hmm. biggest concern coming into the season was a quarterback, Austin Verdreen. He was a sophomore. Uh, a little concerned about him. His brother was quarterback there years ago, uh, and there was a little bit of concern about him. But he's played very well. He's got some really good weapons. Obviously, Kane Hamby. Uh, the Vanderbilt commit is probably the, their best weapon. Zach White, their tailback, has been hurt, but he's back now. He's he's back. He's a, I think he's a ULM. He just signed with ULM to play catcher on the baseball team. So he's a very good running back. They've got a couple guys on defense. Noah Lovelady, and and the last I heard, he didn't have a D1 offer yet, which is crazy because he's 6'2", 220, runs the field. He's a great middle linebacker. They got Ben Duvall, defensive ends, another great athlete. Uh, they're going to be tough to beat. Um, you know, I think I think they're going to probably blow out Westminster. The Glenbrook St. Mary's matchup should be interesting, and uh, if, if Glenbrook wins, it'll be a rematch of that quarterfinal game last year at OCS. It was back and forth. OCS pulled it out at the end. I still say to this day, if Glenbrook won that game, they'd have been state champions under David Feaster. They were that good. Uh, but I think OCS gets past either one of them, and then because we're going to be at St. Frederick's this week, Central Catholic. You know, uh, St. Frederick's got William Patrick back, their receiver. He just committed to LSU play baseball. He, he mm-hmm. missed the first eight games of the season. He was focused on baseball. He's come back. He's an athlete. He's 6'2", 6'3". Um, stay, he won state long jump as a freshman, was runner-up last year to Tate Hamby, the OCS receiver. He's an athlete. Baseball, track, football. And they've got a quarterback, Montreal Connor Jr., sophomore, explosive, uh, NBA Dade, five foot three, tailback, explosive. Both those guys can run. Uh, my nephew plays defensive end for him. He's a senior year, so obviously pulling for him. Uh, they're, they're a very good ball team. Uh, I think they beat Central Catholic. Them against Southern Lab. You know, last year they gave Southern Lab a great game. Uh, that's going to be a, a, a tough match. I mean, it's really a tough schedule for St. Fred's. They've got to beat Southern Lab and then OCS. So uh, I think OCS gets out of there overall. But, you know, you can't overlook Southern Lab for sure. And You know, we've, we've seen Southern Lab beat OCS before. So it definitely could happen. But uh, if I had to pick right now, it's hard to pick against OCS. Well, Clay, I mean, we appreciate all the, all the uh, great insight that you and the guys at K104 uh, down as well. Friday night scoreboard show, um, one of the best scoreboard shows out there. I definitely recommend, uh, recommend the follow on Facebook and on social media. Uh, just anything playing for this week was kind of the game of the week and just what's, what's kind of the plan for this week for y'all guys. Yeah, like I said, we're going to go to uh, St. Fred's and, and cover that game with Central Catholic. We'll have our eyes and ears open on uh, a lot of games in the area, of course. We have to we leave the game early and head to the station, which is pretty close to St. Fred's. So we'll get to watch a good chunk of their game before we have to head to the station. We'll be on from 8 to 11 on K104, which you can you know follow us uh, you know on, on the radio or on TuneIn app or, or the K104, KJLO app, and we'll be covering I think we have about 16 teams, you know, our – Range, we, we cover Glenbrook, North Webster, down to Gina. Uh, Faraday's, you know, got a game on yeah. the road this week. So we'll be covering the, the Trojans as well. Uh, Darbone Woods is another team mm-hmm. in place. We didn't really talk about mm-hmm. Division three. Right. They, uh, I saw uh, my buddy Ray Butler put out this week on Filipino Productions, career playoff wins, Notre Dame 108, Darbone Woods zero. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it's pretty funny, but of course, Louis Cook, congratulations, 400 career wins. 100. You can't say enough about yep. his career. 400, so, yeah. Tommy, Tharp, Tommy Tharp has done a great job up at Darby. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's going to be a, a tall mm-hmm. task for them to knock off uh, their name, but, uh, you know, 
it, they, they're, they're, they're improving each and every year, which is all you can ask for out of the program. But we'll be covering a bunch of games. We're excited about it. We'll see if some of these teams uh, are able to hold off on some upset bids. And then, of course, the quarterfinals, man, that's – I'm already looking at headed quarterfinal matchups. It's going to be spectacular. Oh, I can't wait. I'm having fun. I know Grant's enjoying it too. So, uh, man, I mean, the playoffs are hot and heavy right now, and uh, we can't be more excited. So, we're going about to see some really good matchups coming up, whether it's in North or South Louisiana. We're going to, be, we're going to get a lot of really good football all across the state. Grant, any, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah, no, there's a lot of great uh, great teams up in North Louisiana, especially in Division Three, and Division Four. Which I think you know, everyone wants to talk about Division One, select and non-select, but there's a lot of great teams up in North Louisiana for Division Three and Division Four. Um, you know, it's, I'm so you know, it's, I'm glad that I got some a little more insight from them from you, Clay. Yeah, uh, just because of, I know you're more familiar with those teams and more even more familiar with them than Jace's. So we're glad to have you on the show. Um, you know, this is Grant Sashere, uh, Jason Lejeune of Grand Iron Football. Here with another episode of Protect the Boot with our special guest Clay. Uh, Clay Park. Oh, oh, Clay Parker. I'm sorry. I'm just it's a long show, man. Uh, <laughs> so we're here with a special guest, uh, Clay Parker. Uh, you know, and always remember to protect the boot. Boot up. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. Yeah. No problem.